Hi, so today's topic is on dialysis. So dialysis is the movement of fluid and molecules across a semi-permeable membrane from one compartment to another. Clinically, dialysis is a technique in which substances move from the blood through a semi-permeable membrane and into a dialysis solution, which is a dialysate. It is used to correct fluid and electrolyte imbalances and to remove waste products in kidney failure. It can also be used to treat drug overdoses. There are two methods, two types of dialysis, the peritoneal dialysis and the hemodialysis. In peritoneal dialysis or PD, the peritoneal membrane acts as a semi-permeable semi membrane. In hemodialysis or HD, an, arti an artificial membrane, usually made of cellulose-based or synthetic materials, is used as a semi-permeable membrane and is in contact with the patient's blood. Dialysis is begun when the patient's uremia can no longer be adequately treated with conservative medical management. Generally, dialysis is initiated when the GFR is less than 15 ml per minute. This criterion can vary widely in different clinical situations and the physician will determine when to start dialysis on the basis of the patient's clinical status. Certain uremic complications including encephalopathy, neuropathies, uncontrolled hyperkalemia, pericarditis, and accelerated hypertension indicate a need for immediate dialysis. Most patients with end-stage renal disease are treated with dialysis because there is a lack of donated organs or some patients are physically or mentally unsuitable for transplantation and some patients do not want transplants because it entails being on anti-rejection and immunosuppression drugs for the rest of their life. The general principles of dialysis are diffusion, osmosis, and ultrafiltration. Solutes and water move across the semi-permeable membrane from the blood to the dialysate or from the dialysate to the blood in accordance with the concentration gradient. Dialysis uses the principles of diffusion, osmosis, and ultrafiltration. Diffusion is movement of solutes from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration. In kidney failure, urea, creatinine, uric acid, and electrolytes, that is potassium and phosphorus, move from the blood to the dialysate. RBCs, WBCs, and plasma proteins are too large to diffuse through the pores of the membrane. Osmosis is movement of fluid from an area of lesser concentration of solutes to an area of greater concentration of solutes. Glucose is added to the dialysate and creates an osmotic gradient across the membrane, pulling excess fluid from the blood. Ultrafiltration removes water and fluid through an osmotic gradient. In PD, excess fluid is removed by increasing the osmolality of the dialysate with the addition of glucose. In HD, the gradient is created by increasing the pressure in the blood compartment the positive pressure or decreasing pressure in the dialysate compartment negative pressure. Peritoneal dialysis. In peritoneal dialysis, peritoneal access is obtained by inserting a catheter through the anterior abdominal wall. The catheter is about 60 cm long and has one or two dacron cuffs on its subcutaneous and peritoneal portions. The cuffs act as anchors and prevent the migration of microorganisms down the shaft from the skin. Within a few weeks, fibrous tissues grows into the dacron cuff, holding the catheter in place and preventing bacterial penetration into the peritoneal cavity and has many perforations spaced along the distal end of the tubing to allow fluid to flow in and out of the catheter. The technique for catheter placement varies, but a surgery for proper visualization and placement minimizes complications. Preparation of the patient for catheter insertion includes emptying the bladder and bowel, weighing the patient, and obtaining a signed consent form. This is a picture of the peritoneal dialysis. 
After placement of the peritoneal dialysis catheter, dialysis can be started immediately with low volume exchanges or delayed for two weeks pending healing and sealing of the exit site. Once the catheter insertion is healed, the patient may shower and then pat the catheter and the exit site dry. This is um, another picture of the exit site. Teach all patients to examine the catheter site for signs of infections. A dressing is used. If a dressing is used, it should be changed every day. The dialysis solutions and cycles in a peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is accomplished by infusing the dialysis solution into the peritoneal space. The three phases of a PD cycle or an exchange includes the inflow or the fill stage, the swell or the equilibration phase, and the drain or the outflow stage. During inflow, a prescribed amount of solution is infused through an established peritoneal catheter over about 10 minutes. The flow rate may be decreased if the patient has pain. After the solution has been infused, the inflow camp clamp is closed before air enters the tubing. The dwell phase is the phase during which diffusion and osmosis occurs between the patient's blood and the peritoneal cavity. The duration of the 12 phase is about 20 to 30 minutes to 8 to 8 or more hours depending on the method. Automatic peritoneal dialysis and continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis which are the two different methods. Drain phase takes about 15 to 30 minutes and may be facilitated by gently massaging the abdomen or changing the position. These three phases of the PD cycle, the inflow, dwell and the drain is together called as an exchange. The di dialysis solutions vary and the choice of exchange volume is determined primarily by the size of the peritoneal cavity. A large person may tolerate a 3 liter exchange volume without any difficulty, whereas an average size person usually tolerates a 2 liter exchange. Smaller exchanges, exchange volumes are used for patients with a smaller body pulmonary compromise um, because the added pressure of the large volume may precipitate respiratory difficulty or inguinal hernias. Ultrafiltration or fluid removal during peritoneal dialysis depends on osmotic forces. Glucose is the most effective osmotic agent and dextrose is mostly used but has been associated with high rates of peritoneal glucose absorption leading to problems with hypertriglyceridemia and hyperglycemia. The electrolyte composition is similar to that of uh, plasma. and the solution is usually warmed to the body temperature. Complications of peritoneal dialysis. Infection of the peritoneal catheter site is most commonly caused by Staphylococcus aureus or Staphylococcus epidermidis from the skin flora. Clinical manifestations of an exit site infection includes redness at the site, tenderness, inflammation, and pain. If superficial exit site infections are not immediately treated with antibiotics, it can lead to peritonitis needing removal of the catheter. Peritonitis results from contamination or from progression of an exit site or tunnel infection. Peritonitis can also result from improper technique in making or breaking connections for exchanges. Clinical manifestations include abdominal pain, cloudy peritoneal effluent, elevated white count, positive culture of the peritoneal fluid and GI symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain and distension, hyperactive bowel sounds. Fever may or may not be present. Hernias. Because of increased intra-abdominal pressure secondary to the dialysate infusion, 
Corneas can develop in predisposed individuals such as multiparous women and older men. Lower back problems. Increased intra-abdominal pressure can cause or aggravate lower back pain. The lumbosacral curvature is increased by intraperitoneal infusion of the dialysate. Orthopedic binders and a regular exercise program for strengthening the back muscles have been beneficial. Bleeding. The first few exchanges may have pink or slightly bloody effluent. Bloody effluent over several days or the new appearance of blood in the affluent or the outflow can indicate active intraperitoneal bleeding. Monitor for hypovolemia, hemoglobin and hematocrit levels. Pulmonary complications. Adelectasis, pneumonia and bronchitis may occur from repeated upward displacement of the diaphragm resulting in decreased lung expansion. The longer the dwell time, the greater the likelihood of pulmonary problems. Frequent positioning, deep breathing exercises, and elevating the head of the bed will help. Protein loss. The peritoneal membrane is permeable to plasma proteins, amino acids, and polypeptides. These substances are lost in the dialysate fluid. The amount of protein loss is usually about 0.5 grams per liter of the dialysate drainage, but it can be as high as 10 to 20 grams per day and can be as much as 40 grams per day during episodes of peritonitis as the peritoneal membrane becomes more permeable. This can result in malnutrition. Poor dialysate flow is usually related to constipation. A bowel preparation, high fiber diet, and stool softeners can prevent constipation. Other causes of flow difficulty include kinked or clamped connection tubing, the patient's position, fibrin clot form formation, and catheter displacement. And finally, the effectiveness and adaptation of peritoneal dialysis. Learning the self-management skills necessary for peritoneal dialysis is usually accomplished in a 3-7 to seven day short training program. The primary advantage of uh, peritoneal dialysis is the simplicity and it is a home-based program allowing patient to be independent and in control. The setup is easy and the patient can have a normal life with independence and ease of travel and greater mo mobility than hemodialysis. There are fewer dietary restrictions due to the loss of proteins. PD is essentially indicated for the individual who has vascular access program, pro problems or responds poorly to the hemodynamic stresses of hemodialysis. Thus, um, dialysis is, in summary, dialysis is of two types, the peritoneal and the hemodialysis. In peritoneal dialysis, the peritoneal membrane acts as the semi-permeable membrane. There are three stages in an exchange or three phases in a PD cycle. The inflow or the fill stage, the dwell phase, and the drain phase. And it, together, these three phases are referred to as one exchange. The main complication associated with peritoneal dialysis is um, infection, especially the peritoneal catheter site exit site infection. Peritoneal dialysis is, um, is simple, is home-based, and allows the patient to be in control and can have great, greater independence than the hemodialysis.